All right, so the installation's completed on this Cherokee 6. We're gonna go ahead and do our uh, flight test now. We did all of our ground checkout procedures as prescribed in the installation manual. Uh, so we'll demonstrate some of the features of the 275 and show it in operation. One feature that we're gonna show is the uh, lean assist, and uh, that's gonna be pretty useful for pretty much everybody installing these. Pre-flight's complete, let's get loaded up and uh, let's show you how this thing works. All right, so we're at uh, our cruising altitude here for our test flight. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the uh, features of the instrument, make sure everything's checking out okay. So we're on autopilot, so we can dedicate a little bit more time to the instrument here. So first things first, as we check all of our readings and make sure that everything makes sense, one thing of note is that the manifold pressure gauge is kind of bouncing around on us here. Now, I have the factory manifold pressure gauge and we're at 22 inches. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll look at the plumbing of the sensor, make sure that everything's okay. Uh, we'll probably do a quick wire check, just make sure everything's okay there, and then we'll check out the sensor itself um, and uh, diagnose what's going on with that. Uh, other than that, everything else seems uh, proper. So let's go ahead and demonstrate a couple features of uh, the 275 EIS. This here is our CHT EGT page. Now you can use this outer knob to scroll around, or you can just tap on what you want. So we can see right now cylinder 3 is running the hottest on both CHT and EGT. So it's nice that it points that out for you. So let's go ahead and show lean assist. So if we scroll over with the inner knob, we enter lean assist mode. And you can see it says lean right there. And now it's ready to lean. So I'll start reducing my mixture. And these uh, EGT probes are pretty much instant in how quickly they respond. Uh, which is pretty neat. So we're going to just keep paying attention here to our EGTs, slowly reducing our mixture. Alright, so we had a peak. We're behind it. So we're going to go ahead and increase again until we get back to peak. So I'm going to run this engine 50 degrees rich of peak. So there's our peak again. We're going to go ahead and enrich it until we hit rich peak. Okay, so here we go. Now we're coming back. There's 20 degrees. There's 40 degrees. There's 50. Looks like I might have overshot it just a little bit. So come back. Now one thing that uh, you can find yourself easily doing is trying to chase these numbers. So don't be so worried about hitting a specific target because this gauge has more resolution and accuracy than you ever would have on a steam gauge. So honestly, at 58, 59, I'm going to be happy with that because for me to sit here and try to tweak the mixture, it's going to be tough. So one thing that's cool is you can see that we have our gallons per hour delta from peak. So at peak, uh, we were burning 1.2, uh, 1.1 gallons per hour less than we are right now. And we're currently burning 14.2 gallons per hour, uh, which at this power setting makes actually a lot of sense. So that's... Uh, that's how we lean the engine with the GI-275. Of course, you can go lean a peak as well. It doesn't matter. So now, let me show you normalize mode. So what normalize mode does is it takes all of your cylinders, EGTs, and CHTs, and it puts them on the same plane. So now, if any one cylinder starts behaving weird, it's going to be become very obvious because it's going to start moving above or below your zero line. So now, let's go ahead and go back to our main page. And the next thing we'll show you is the uh, Garmin Pilot integration uh, with Kinex. All right, guys, one other thing I wanted to show you real quick. So I'm actually Bluetooth connected to the GI-275 at the moment. And uh, one thing that's cool is we can pull up the EIS page on Garmin Pilot here, and we can view, the, actually, there's the history of where we first started the flight. We can also view current engine parameters. So our EGTs are over here. I can switch this to CHTs. I can even show uh, fuel flow over altitude. Uh, you can see where we were actually leaning here earlier. I've got uh, my oil temperature and pressure here with the ranges. I've got fuel quantity, which matches the uh, gauge in the uh, aircraft. I've got my manifold pressure, my tachometer, fuel flow, volts and amps, and then my CHT and EGT graphs over here as well. So if you had your uh, iPad panel mounted over, let's say, on the co-pilot side, this is actually a pretty useful little page. And then you can uh, expand these things around 
Um, they're adding a little bit more uh, as far as configurability goes in the future to this too, so uh, this will become even more useful. All right, so that's the GI-275 EIS flight. We're gonna go ahead and land the aircraft and uh, we'll pop the cowl, take a look at the manifold pressure sensor, get that diagnosed and fixed, and this aircraft is uh, good to go otherwise. All right, so now we're back from our flight, so what we're gonna do now is connect to our 275s and download the EIS data via Bluetooth. Now, one point of note, you don't have to be connected during the flight to have the data download. You only have to connect at some point in time to get it. The 275 will download the data and store it in memory in the meantime. So let's start now. So we've got a multi-display system in here, as you can see. Uh, in this case, the ADI is the primary 275, and that's where we're going to make our wireless connection. If you do not have anything else and you only have the EIS unit, uh, you would just connect Bluetooth straight through that. So on the ADI, we're going to hold in the inner knob. That opens our menu here. We're going to scroll over to find system. Then we're going to scroll over to find wireless. And then we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to go to pair device. So now while that's waiting, we'll go to settings on our iPad, and we'll wait for the 275. There it is. We'll connect to it. We'll hit pair, and then we'll hit pair. Now on the iPad, we're going to open up Garmin Pilot, and you can actually see I've already got the logbook data downloaded here, but our EIS page is over here. We can see that it's connected. Uh, we can also go to devices, and we can see that the 275 is connected here as well. Now, one point of note before you do anything else after you've made your Bluetooth connection, go to logbook and then go to settings, and then scroll to these uh, items here. It'll say stream flight data log, and then collect flight data logs for previous flights, both via Connext. Make sure those are on. If they're off, then the EIS page won't be there, and the flight logs will not automatically download to the iPad uh, through the Bluetooth connection. So now we'll go to our entries page, and you can see I've got a few different flights here that uh, uh, some of them I've accepted, some of them need review. Uh, this one I picked here is a flight from uh, D95 to Nine Golf 2 in March. Uh, you can see over on the right side here we've got track data, attitude data, air data, and engine data, all those green checked. So that means that uh, all that information is present in this flight log. So we can actually view engine data right in the Garmin Pilot app. And you can see we can play this back here, we can pause it, we can scrub through it, we can set our playback time, all that stuff. Um, the graph over here of CHTs, we can change things around, we can put all this information on here, say EGTs for example. Um, so this is a nice little interactive interface. I'll close this out. Uh, we can also hit the share button here and we can do a CSV share or a GPX. Uh, CSV is handy because that means you can send an Excel file essentially right to uh, your AMP mechanic and they can actually look through this data. So if you have some kind of event in flight, they can uh, go back and see uh, you know, if you had a high EGT, they can find that point and then see what else the engine might have been doing at that moment. And uh, maybe you won't be able to directly diagnose what's going on, but you can give yourself a good starting path to see uh, what caused that. Uh, one thing of note as well is this data automatically uploads to fly.garmin.com. So let's go there and see uh, what kind of information is available to you in that spot. So I'm on Safari here on the iPad and I've already logged into Garmin Pilot. Um, and I've actually already opened up the flight, but all you have to do is hit logbook here and then find the flight that you want. So I'll find the accepted flight and hit details. So now this is just going to load up all the information that we were seeing on Garmin Pilot. One thing that's really nice about this view is you can actually see we've got a replication of our attitude indicator and our HSI as well as our engine information. So if I start this flight here, you can actually see what was going on on everything. So if you have other 275s, um, you know, all this information comes through. This also will work on G3X, TXI, and G1000NXI. Uh, so we'll kind of zoom through the flight here so you can see um, it took off, they were climbing, just passed through 2000 there, about 100 knots or so. You can see what the HSI was doing. Here's all the engine information. All this stuff's available to you, and again, you can download this data as a CSV, and also you get the Google Earth options here on, uh, as well on Garmin, uh, Fly Garmin. 
Okay, so with the flight log that we actually downloaded a little bit ago, we were able to diagnose the manifold pressure issue that we were seeing on this aircraft and get it repaired. So now the installation's complete and the airplane's ready for return to service. As you can see, the information that the 275 gives you, um, there's a lot of it, but it's all very useful. And um, it's nice how you can see things like uh, shock cooling indicators if you're not treating your engine properly, uh, be able to fine tune your leaning of the engine, um, and of course the flight logging as well. Uh, if you have any questions about the GI275 or our EIS quick kits, please feel free to drop us a line through one of our normal channels. And uh, we'll be making more videos about the GI275 in the future, uh, including one where we actually try to diagnose an engine that's having a problem um, if we end up running into one. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We have, like I said, more GI275 content coming, as well as content for our other Garmin products such as the G3X Touch.